YouTube, what's good? We're back in this thing. We just hit 10,000 subscribers. So I just want to take a moment and say thank you guys so, so much. It's really cool. It's one tenth of the way to my goal this year. We're going to get to 100,000 subscribers this year. So if you have a friend that would be interested in this channel, I'd appreciate it if you shared it. It would really help me achieve my goal of this year. Anyone that's watched the channel, liked, commented, bought my pack, anything that supported the channel, thank you very much. Uh, if you're watching the video right now, that is a lot of support. So thank you. I just posted on Instagram what I should do for my 10K celebration video, and we're going to do an editing contest. So right now I'm working on getting you guys some real good footage that you can edit, working out some prizes. So you guys have an incentive to do that. Just really planning everything out. So it's good, fair and entertaining contest. Expect an announcement on that on my YouTube channel and my Instagram sometime later this week. If you're new to the channel, what we do here is a lot of tutorials on music video edits, behind the scenes and music videos, vlogs, just anything in the hip hop kind of scene that's creative. That's what I've been focused on. Mostly visual. I've done a few other things, but uh, for the most part, it's visually creative stuff. Uh, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and click subscribe. If you guys could take a second and like and comment, that really helps push the video to people that want to see the video, other music video directors, editors, or just anyone that's consuming content like this helps grow the channel. And in return, we can make more videos for you guys on the channel. Also, one last thing before we get into the video, if you want to support the channel even more, you can go over to my website, briandelmata.com and check out my texture pack. The texture pack allows you to get that AUG Lone Wolf paper rip uh, effects and transitions. I have a playlist I'll have linked below of all the effects that you can do with it. I've been updating that like probably once a week just with new effects and tutorials that you can do. I'll have that link below as well as the website where you can check out the pack. But yeah guys, let's get into this video. Today we're gonna be going over this CRT effect. I saw it done in the Pierre Born guillotine video. It looks something like this. And honestly, I think this is done with a real CRT TV, but I could get something very, very close. And honestly, I didn't even know before I tried it out that it was possible to get something that looks this close 100% digitally with no plugins as well. Definitely going to be spilling some sauce today. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create an adjustment layer. You can right click here, create new item and then adjustment layer, drag it above the clip you want to affect. And that's not going to do anything right off the bat, but we're going to go over and type in grid. So then you can just drag the default grid effect on, and that's not going to do anything right away, but we can change the anchor point to something like negative one on the left-hand side or a little bit more. So you don't see that white bar on the left hand side anymore go over to size from and choose width and height sliders instead of corner point and then there's two different ways you can do this you can have vertical and horizontal bars or you could have one or the other so i'll show you how to do that if you want just horizontal bars you can drag the width all the way until you see no bars at all and then drag the height to something i like three i think that looks pretty good and then change the border down to something like three and change the color to black and then go to overlay and you can see that we have these horizontal bars it's already kind of giving you that little bit of the effect obviously it's making it a little bit darker but that's cool we can fix that easily and then if you wanted the horizontal and vertical what you can do is just change the width to three as well and that's gonna make it really really uh dark so i would change the border to two it basically just changes the size of the bars that way you can see a little bit better and if you want to you can even play with the opacity I like leaving it at 100 i think it looks the best and for right now i'm just going to leave the horizontal and vertical like i said you can do either or it doesn't really matter i think when we add the lens distortion and stuff i think it looks cool having both obviously up to you so then the next thing we're going to do is add some lens distortion it is a built-in effect just like all these other ones and then just drag that onto the adjustment layer as well go to effects control and then you can do the curvature whatever you like i like something around 50 i found that that works a lot and then you can already see you have these uh circle effects on the grid kind of like how if you were recording recording an actual TV, you would get that little bit of distortion. And then you can change these uh, vertical decentering and horizontal decentering and then vertical prism effects uh, and horizontal prism effects. I think it looks cool to do it. I always just do just a little bit. You can do whatever you want. I found if I do 10, 3, 10, 3, it just has like a nice distortion to it. And it kind of looks like you're shooting, uh, you're actually recording the TV from like an angle because you're not going to be like dead on. It's kind of like really hard to do that. I mean, you could set the time up and whatever, but it, it gives that more realistic of a look. And then what I'm going to do is just highlight both these clips, click nest, and you can name this full effect or just something so you know, you know, it's the full effect. And then what I do is I just scale in, move the position around a little bit till it fits the screen in a hole and just try to set up your subject. So now you already have that kind of like TV bar look effect around here. You have these, these swirls in the grid and, it, and the grid's not exactly perfectly horizontal and vertical. I think that really has a cool effect. And right there, honestly, if you didn't want to add flicker or anything else, you can get away with just that. But I'm going to be teaching you guys how to sauce it up even more and really sell the whole effect and make it and make it something that no one else is doing right now. I haven't seen a tutorial or uh, anyone really do this. I'm assuming this one's real. But like I said, I guess the editor of this video could have uh, done the same thing as well. So the next step to really sell the effect is go into your 
nested sequence click on your video playback or your actual video layer the not adjustment layer one so whatever your video is playing out of and then go to effects i'm going to add some noise I think noise always makes an effect look better. I'm a big fan of it. I check use color noise because those TVs typically have some kind of color noise. And I'm just going to do like something like six, um, maybe even a little bit more, to be honest. You can see a little bit. I don't know how well it's going to pick it up here, but it is adding a little bit. You can go as crazy as you want with it or as little as you want with it. You don't even have to add it. Uh, just keep that in mind. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add some brightness and contrast. Drag that onto the video clip. And I'm just going to bump up the contrast a little bit, maybe something like 25. That way it kind of just adds that contrast like you're recording an actual TV. And then what I'm going to do is keyframe the brightness, go one frame, put it to something like 10. And this is going to give the flicker effect. You can also use Sapphire Flicker if you have it, but I just want to show how to do it without any plugins. Go one frame forward, maybe bring it down to something like two, go to the next frame forward. You could do something like 12, back down, you could go five, maybe go to seven, just kind of make it a little bit random. That's what I like doing. Zero and then maybe like two. And then you can copy and paste all of the keyframes and just copy and paste them throughout. That way you don't have to go and manually keyframe all of them. I think that will be enough randomness. If you do like anywhere from like five to seven, maybe to 10 individual keyframes, you could just copy and paste it through. And you can see now you have that little bit of flicker. You can go as crazy as you want with it or as little of a flicker as you want. I think whatever, it, it's all dependent on like what kind of TV you're trying to replicate because some of them have a lot, some of them don't. So it's all up to you. I like the values we have here. It's, uh, it's obviously flickering, but it could be a little bit less noticeable or you could even go crazy. So it's really all up to you. And then another thing you can do is add some channel blur. And I'm gonna drag this onto the video clip itself as well. And what this is gonna do is just add some distortion between the colors. So I click repeat edge pixels always, and I have it on horizontal and vertical. And I forgot to mention, you can turn off the adjustment layer for right now so you can see how you're affecting it a little bit more. Obviously it's gonna change when you add the adjustment layer back on, so keep that in mind. You know, for something real easy, you can do that. And you can play with whatever colors uh, you think look cool being split apart. So I just kind of drag all of them until you get some kind of cool look. I like the red blurriness. I think that looks pretty cool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keyframe almost with the flicker. So I'm gonna have it zero, go a frame, something like 15 go down two i had 25 down 10 5 and then i'm just going to copy and paste these throughout you can and then once you copy and paste it once you can highlight it depending on how long of a clip you have it it's kind of helpful to do that and you can see it kind of has that distortion as well as flicker and that's really selling the effect you can turn back on your adjustment layer and then go to the overall project rendering in and out does help because i've noticed that the effect that you see when you're previewing is a little bit different when it's fully rendered out. I think that's just because there's so many little things happening. So you can see that in the rendered out sequence, it does look a little bit darker with the TV lines and stuff. So if you wanted to go back and change any of that, uh, it's very easy to do. You can just go to your grid. Since we have horizontal and vertical grid bars, it is gonna be a little bit darker. So maybe I just bumped down the opacity of it to 75. At this point, it's all just preference. It's whatever you think looks best. You can pull up a clip that you're trying to mimic, uh, or you could just make an effect that's unique, completely unique that no one's made before. And this one, the only thing that I'm noticing that's a little bit different about ours is maybe he has a little bit of glow or some kind of tint. So we can go ahead and add some tint. If you drag that on, it's gonna make it black and white. And then if you want the highlights to be changed from the black and white, you can map the white to something. I think it looked cool how it was like kind of glowing pink because of his jacket. So I'm gonna choose pink. And then when you do that, it's gonna change it all to pink. So you have to play with the amount to tint. And that has a kind of a cool uh, tint. Maybe you could do even something a little bit more aggressive. It's all preference, like I always say. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I think I'm gonna stay with something like 10. And then if you wanted to, you can add some glow. Uh, you can add wave warp. You can just add just add a bunch of different things. These are all just ideas. Uh, so obviously add whatever effects you think look good. And if you didn't notice, it is too dark. Uh, that's what I'm finding with my clip at least. You can just go to the exposure of the overall clip and bump that up. I just did something like one. That way, if you go back into your main comp, it is a little bit more bright. The color of, or the exact brightness of the other clip you could go into like comparison mode or something and then you can find your clip. It, uh, you just gotta match it up with the timeline where you think your clip is. And you can see that on the left-hand side is our, or on the right-hand side is our effect. And then on the left-hand side is the actual clip. It doesn't really matter too much. I think whatever we have right now is pretty good. So after that exposure tweak we did, 
I'm going to render it out, and then uh, I think that's pretty much it for the effect. Yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the effect. If you want to see a breakdown of the full guillotine music video, definitely let me know. I plan on doing that anyways, but it does help just knowing uh, if it's worth my time to record that video for you guys, if you guys want to see that. If you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. Uh, if you haven't already, like and comment. It really does help push my content to people that want to see it. If you want to support the channel even more, you can go over to brianelmata.com and check out my texture pack to get that AUG lone wolf style paper rip transitions and effects. I will keep you guys posted on Instagram and on my YouTube channel about the 10K editing contest. I think that's gonna be really cool for you guys and uh, for the channel as a whole. It'll be definitely really fun to judge it. And I think we're gonna get a lot of submissions because a lot of people are swiping up on Instagram saying to do that. Yeah guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Peace.